Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingerSplyShop.com. Bringing another tie -in video today. This one's a cool one. Um, this one's a Lively Legs pattern. And it's very similar to one I've done in the past, just tied a little bit differently with some different materials. This one is a slate drake, and um, it's a very clean, very easy pattern to tie. It is very similar to Scott's Big Nymph. Um, this one was posted by John Peters. And uh, he shared it to Lively Legs, and they posted it on their page. And uh, that's where I found out about it. Actually, not from the Lively Legs page, but from a custom order I had somebody sent me. And asked me if I could tie from the picture that was on the Lively Legs page. And I said, sure. And I had been tying a lot of Scott's Big Nymphs. And I still am tying a lot of Scott's Big Nymphs. If you're interested in having me tie them for you, just get a hold of me, Holsinger's Fly Shop at gmail.com. I can custom tie anything you need but um, after tying a lot of Scott's Big Nymphs and then running on to this one I like this pattern a lot more than the Scott's Big Nymphs personal preference just me um, reason being it's a lot cleaner it's a lot easier to tie I can tie these a lot faster and it's a lot cleaner but I also get a bead on it if you know me if you follow me I'm a big Euro nymph fisherman I want to fly heavy I'm putting a bead on this, I'm getting more weight on it than I am on the Scots Big Nymph. So it's getting down quicker, getting in the fish's face faster, which is what I want. So, I don't competition fish, so using lively legs is no big deal to me. Um, you know, it doesn't matter to me, I can fish them if I want to. This is my preferred pattern for a slate drake. And uh, I'm going to be showing you another pattern coming up here very shortly, which is a green drake using the same method just changing the colors to a chat to um, you know to get a different fly which that's what I try to stress in all my videos and this will be a great example of it how changing colors you know once you learn the techniques and the patterns you can change the patterns to fit your hatch and uh, an Isoniki or a slate drake and a green drake they're both mayflies okay all you're doing is imitating a mayfly, a mayfly nymph. But to do that, you're changing the colors to match a specific mayfly nymph. So this is the pattern for a slate drake nymph. Next time, next week or whatever, I'll have a green drake nymph. And I'm gonna show you the colors I use to tie that. So anyway, sit back, watch this one. It's a great video, it's a great pattern, and uh, I'm sure you're gonna like it. Okay guys, here you see the fly in the vise. Uh, really cool looking pattern. Let's get into tying it. Now, I am going to start out with my hook already ready for me. The hook is a 718 in a size 10. The bead is a 3.5 millimeter black tungsten bead from Firehole. The lead is a 0.015, or er, sorry, 0.015 lead wire and it's about 20 wraps on there, give or take a couple and uh, the thread we're using is 140 denier and this is dark gray I've just been using dark gray for a lot of things lately it works great and you're not going to see it in this fly so it doesn't really matter so I'm going to wrap my thread back here to the bend of the hook and this is going to be a pretty long fly the next thing we're going to use is some brown ostrich arrow. I got this one picked over really well. Time to get a new one. And I'm going to take three strands of it. And I'm going to place the three strands together by the tips. And we're going to try to get these tips lined up. And this is going to become my tail. The tips of it will become my tail. So once I get these lined up, which seems to be the hardest part of this fly, there we go. You see there I got them all lined up. I'm going to place them on top. I'm actually going to bring my thread back here a little bit. So it's a little bit easier. That's why I can tie them back down back here and see how far they're going to go out. That's about where I want it. So make a couple more wraps and then we're just going to pull this backwards. 
because we're going to wrap those down to make the gills on our abdomen. And we're just going to wrap it down back here to the bend. Okay, now, next thing I want to do on this fly is I want to use some Sculpin Olive wire. This one is brassy. So we're just going to peel a piece of this off. Uh, probably four or five inches, you know, you should have enough for the next one. We're just going to tie this down on the side. Okay. Then I'm going to, I like to use gel spun thread, but instead of gel spun thread, if you don't have gel spun, which a lot of you probably don't, uh, I'm just going to use two strands, one sp or two strands, I should say, of 140 denier um, white thread. And this is going to make the line down the back of this fly. So I'm just going to double it up. I'm going to run it right down the back of this fly. Okay, you'll see how that comes in handy here in a second. Next thing I'm using is some dark brown Antron. And we're just going to single through, do this single, I guess, one strand of it, and we're going to tie it down on top and wrap it back to the bend. Okay, and then we'll wrap it back up there. And now we're ready to put the dubbing on here. For the dubbing on this, I'm going to use Stonefly Gills from uh, Davy Whitlock's Dubbing Blends. And like I always say, I do not want to get thick on this. I'm just going to change the color of my thread. So I'm going to put it on there thin, because I've already built up a good bit of body to that, wrapping all the material down. All right, put it on there. Then I'm going to wrap it forward, keep it nice and even. Nice and level, I should say. And we're going to go up about two-thirds of the way. I'm going to go just a hair more. I'm going to put just a little bit more on. Alright. There we go. We've got about two-thirds of the way. Then I'm going to separate these ostrich hurls out of here. And this is going to be the gills on the fly. And we're just going to evenly space these, nice and even, nice and neatly. Going to wrap these forward and tie it off. And then we'll trim them. Now I'm going to pull my Antron thread down over the back and I want to keep that right on center. Okay, you can see I got it centered right down the middle of the back. We'll wrap it off and then you can be careful here use your finger just a little bit to spread that out give it a little bit of width on it okay and then I'm going to trim this off because I want to tie it back in in a second but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this white stripe I'm going to make a white stripe right down through the middle whoops there you go. I'm going to run it right down through the middle of that brown back. And to do that, to keep this tight, I'm going to just take and twist my fingers, which will spin this together. And then I'm just going to tie it down. So there you can see I got it running nice and evenly right down the middle of that brown. And then I'm going to take my Sculpin Olive here, and I'm going to rib rib this abdomen try not to trap too many of those fibers down try to go in between your wraps okay once we get it up here we're going to tie this off and then we can break off our wire now the white thread I'm going to double it back over and save it for later so you can see there I have my white line going back now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Antron that I cut off a second ago, and I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm going to tie it in by the tips. So I want double here. I want single, single on the abdomen, and on the thorax, we're going to double the Antron up. 
So we're just going to tie that in right behind the bead. And I'm going to keep it separated a little bit. As you see here, like I took my fingers and twisted and pulled it apart a little bit. Alright. Now, next thing we're going to come in is some red squirrel abdomen. Sorry, red squirrel thorax dubbing. Red squirrel thorax from SLF dubbing blends. And again, I already got a lot built up in there with my lead and my other stuff wrapped in. So I want to go light on here. Don't want to build this up too much. And I like to start up at the head and wrap my way back. Now you see I still got dubbing wrapped on here. So I'm going to thin it out just a little bit more. And I'm going to take my live legs. And I already cut these. And as you see, I cut the top two legs. This is a large brown. I cut the tab off the top and I cut the top two legs off. So we're just going to set that on top right in there behind that bead and I'm just going to wrap it down into place lightly at first so it goes where I want it and then as I make some more wraps I'll, I'll, I'll wrap tighter with it and there you see I, you, I covered up the bottom I left the nice bottom nice and clean and all I really did was cover up the top, top of it there so you don't need a lot of dubbing to do it just lock it into place there then we're going to pull our wing case, the double wing case here, back over the top. Tie it off right in there behind that bead. Oops. Pull it into place. And then I'm going to trim it off. And then I'm going to come back in with my white thread. Give it another little twist. Because I want a small line right down through the middle there. And we're just going to tie that off. And that gives us that nice detailed line that you'll see on a slate drake. I'm going to trim that off. And the other nice thing about the 140 over the gel spun is you don't really have to worry about dulling your scissors with the 140 vinegar. And then we're just going to tie it off. And that is all that's to this simple fly. Very nice and clean, easy to tie fly that gives you a great look. Okay guys, I hope you like this tie. Like I said, it's a very clean tie. Um, I don't have to fight with turkey feathers and stuff like that. I like that reason a lot better. Plus, I don't have to worry about getting turkey feathers. You know, I've been going through a ton of them with the Scots Big Nymphs. Um, this is very easy. I like this method and it has a very nice clean look to it. Which is, you know, I want, when I tie a fly, the things I'm looking for is profile. This has a great profile to it. It's very thin, very slim. Um, it's going to sink fast. Uh, I got extra weight on it to help compensate for those lively legs sticking out there, which are going to cause a little bit of drag in my sinkage, but I got to add extra weight to it. That's why I prefer this fly over a Scott's Big Nymph, just my personal preference. And, uh, you know, fish it. Maybe you will too. But anyways, guys, this was a very fun one to tie. Like I said, I'm going to have a green drake pattern coming up showing you how to match the hatch is all we're doing. Time, you know, I've, I've done other videos where I've showed two very similar flies in two different colors. So learn techniques. I stress it all the time. If you can learn techniques, you're going to learn fly tying. The best way is to um, hammer on your technique over pattern because if you learn the patterns, if you learn the techniques, it's all the techniques that fall into place to make a pattern. So that's the best way to, to, that I feel to teach it. So I hope you had fun. If you're interested in any of these flies, I have some on the website. Or you can contact me at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. And all the materials you need to tie it are at wholesingersflyshop.com. Or you can find them down in the materials in the link below in the description. So have fun tying, guys. Until next week when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.